Yeah, the donations are closed as of now for this uh, bid war. General donations are, of course, open still. Um, yeah, it's gonna be Tomb Raider, the last revelation, and I guess we're gonna give it to the runner. Oh, we're not giving it to the runner. He has some setup to do. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, after this run, we're actually going to have a showcase um, in the game. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I had to do some switch here because, well... To be fair, these were the two least uh, likely options you guys chose, so I guess we go with Japanese then. Uh, yeah, and since the cutscenes in this game are not skippable, uh, there will be plenty of opportunities to talk about things, so we just start. Uh, okay, three, two, one, go. <laughs> this is what you guys donated for, sorry. Okay, there we go. So yeah, and this is Tomb Raider 4, The Last Revelation. Um, we start out in Cambodia, as you can see. So subtitles are in English, however there are some liberal translations, let's say. And uh, this is a trap, which totally works. And so yeah, Cambodia acts as the tutorial level. Um, we are here with uh, our, our mentor, Werner von Croy. He's an Austrian guy. And sometimes he will interrupt us, like here. Um, these tutorial cutscenes we, we can skip. Um, longer ones, like at the level end or like level transitions, we cannot skip. So that's why you might get to hear a bit of Japanese every now and then. So here we just learn the, the basics of, of tomb raiding, basically. So you can see here wall shimmying, jumping, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, right now our inventory is very limited. We have a few med packs, and that's about it. We could collect some secrets. Oh, sorry. Okay, I guess. <laughs> sorry, got that clearly, thanks. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, only very limited items, so there's not too much we can do right now, so this is uh, basically glitchless, trust me. I'm totally not lining anything up here, which is very consistent. <clears throat> Oops. So yeah, um, in this game, thank you. <laughs> in this game, or rather the classic Tomb Raider, so Tomb Raider 1 to 5, if you embed out of bounds kind of, the game tries to push you out on top. So if there's collision on top of wherever you are out of... <laughs> Hi. I mean, what? If, um, so yeah, if you try to go out of bounds, the game tries to push you out on top. If there is no collision out, uh, on top, you will stay out of bounds and can't really move. And uh, yeah, so here's the next part, which is the monkey bars, I guess. Um, can you just... <laughs> At least normally I understand what he's saying. <laughs> Sam, hope, I hope you're happy with your Japanese language. <laughs> What's our mentor called again? Could you pronounce it in a more Japanese way? I appreciate that. He will do so later on. So oh, thank you. I don't want to falsify the experience of... Uh, <laughs> I don't need to spoil the fun. <laughs> exactly. I could not do it justice <laughs> myself. So yeah, and you can also see in the top right, we have a sprint bar. Um, this is actually the second Tomb Raider game that had sp sprinting mechanic. However, in this game, they kind of revamped it. So in the previous Tomb Raider, um, there was also sprinting, but you were only able to sprint once your stamina bar was full. Here you can basically sprint whenever you have stamina, which makes it a bit easier to manage your sprint. And yeah, since we're coming up with, oops, <coughs> yeah, this was exactly what I wanted. Since we're coming up with the first longer cutscene, I guess we could also use this opportunity to talk about the lovely people on couch. After you. Hello, I'm Tokoloni1. <laughs> I'm not a part of the Tom community, but I'm here anyways, I guess. You played this thanks. game for two minutes. I that did, yeah. qualifies you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, hello, I'm Eidgott. I actually run a classic Tomb Raider, number three. <laughs> So I'm I'm totally qualified for this. Actually, overqualified. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, my name is Kaimon. I'm also part of the Tom community. 
have also started to learn this game, but I struggled with the math puzzle, which you will <laughs> see later on, so I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Also, this is a very iconic scene. You know, Link pulls out the Master Sword and Laura finds a random backpack from a dead guy and takes it. <laughs> Instead of buying some, <laughs> but okay, I guess. I mean, it's cheaper this way, it's kind of <laughs> evident. <yeah. laughs> does, it, does it say that she shouldn't go alone anywhere? <laughs> Sorry, I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right, so you wouldn't know. Exactly. Since when do they have Japanese writing on the walls in Egypt? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, this is Cambodia, right? This is Cambodia, yes. Yeah, well, um, same question. So maybe we will go to Egypt afterwards, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know how I came up with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds angry, but I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> No, but in English he basically says, uh, dive through the gap, which makes just about as much sense. <laughs> Tauchen Sie durch die Öffnung. <laughs> what, what is this language? I don't think we donated for that. I don't know, I think my tongue slipped there, I'm sorry. Also, I had to go into the inventory there. You saw, um, so basically you start out with one large med pack and three small med packs. Small med packs heal you for 50% of your health. Large med packs heal you full, and I already... Uh, used up all my large med packs, so I guess I just wanted to make sure that I still have enough med packs. This will definitely not come into play later. Oops. And uh, here I need to get uh, to the top. Uh, this might not work. Let me, let me set that up again. Oops. As uh, Kellerov mentioned, the, the med counter in this game is definitely not broken no. or anything. Why would you bring that up? <laughs> Such a random comment. Huh? Yeah, exactly. yeah I, I don't know. Also, that was a, a rope, as you were able to see. This, I think, is the first game that introduced the ropes. Maybe I'd got, you That know? is uh, correct. Correct, okay, yeah. And uh, they were very well received because they're super easy to handle and definitely you always can do it, like, they do exactly what you want them to do. Yeah, a lot of people actually get stuck on that part <laughs> just because they don't know how the rope works. <laughs> because obviously you swing back and forwards with sprint. Yeah, it's totally intuitive. I did definitely didn't have to Google the controls just to find out how it works. We have a donation of ten dollars by Roby XD, who wishes you good luck on the run. Thank you very much, Rob. <laughs> so basically, Werner um, challenges to a duel here. So whoever gets to the the iris, the artifact first. I thought you didn't wins. speak Japanese. What? <laughs> I didn't say I did. I didn't. I just interpreted what was going on. Uh huh. Like in anime, they say you don't really need to understand. You can tell it from their expressions. From context. Exactly. Weeps out, by the way. I mean, there's a timer at the top, so you know this is a legit speedrun. And as you may have been able to tell, Werner kind of cheated because he says, uh, or he, he would say that, uh, nice, that you should not do this. I think there was, yeah, there it is. Um, he says on the count of three, and then he counts down, one, two, and then he just uh, runs off. So that's kind of mean. Well, runs, quotation marks. <laughs> <laughs> His acceleration is rather low, maybe. We should just follow him. He knows where to go. <laughs> uh, obviously, I don't. <laughs> that doesn't look very speedy now. Shush. I mean, <laughs> he cheated before, so I guess we can cheat as well. If he would make, like, way, please. This is going very well. Including that lag. Even before Werner is the real speedrunner here. Oops. He started it. <laughs> and yeah, that's the end of Cambodia. So yes, we won. I think the only difference between you or Werner winning is like this part. The first 10 seconds are normally you're here when Werner wins, he finds this first, so that's about it. The rest plays out exactly the same. Is there like 10 years old, judging from my voice? Like, <laughs> no comment. Oh, <laughs> 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 
田考古学者で冒険家のララ・クロフトさんご忠告をどうも待てよ有名な考古学者であり冒険家なのはこの私バーナー・フォン・クロイで君は私の教え物だ<笑>さあ壁の時に聞いたのは聞いたのは聞いたのは聞いたのは聞いたのはそうよく覚えているともさあレバーを引くんだミス・クロフト知らないから<笑>はい。バイバイシークレフト。I'm so sorry. And that's the last we see of him. Yes, definitely. <laughs> also, does not make any appearances in other Tomb Raider games. Totally not. No. Please watch my run tomorrow. I mean, what? <laughs> As we play this game in Japanese, Seven Ball Seven took the chance oh, no. and. <laughs> Gave us a donation in Japanese oh and、God. he's testing my non existing <laughs> Japanese skills by saying, Gambate, Kadi Senpai, Toka Kyun no Baka. <laughs> Arikato. I mean, what? <laughs> I'm speaking in tongues here. So, yeah. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, we're in Egypt now.、Um, So, the rest of the game will be actually taking place in, in Egypt, and I'm collecting some items here. And as you can tell, we're also grown up Lara now, which means we have access to some more stuff like a shotgun that just lies around randomly. Thank you. It's just Egypt, honestly, that's <laughs> how it works there.、Yeah. <laughs> no comment. Some Middle e a s t e r s So, uh, yeah,、um, I collected flares.、Um, In reality, they're more like magic wands because they're among the most important items in, in, for a speedrun.、Um, you may have been able to kind of tell one application. So, when we're jumping from too far a height,、uh, when you land, you would get a stumble animation. But if you instead discard your、uh, flare you're holding, that animation kind of takes priority and you don't get the stumble animation. But there's also an even better application. So, if you place them close to a wall and you grab it like backwards, you <coughs> embed in the wall. And as I mentioned before, if there's a collision on top, you will, bet, you will get pushed out to the top. And this is not where I wanted to jump. So, we were able to collect that、uh, key there the non conventional way, I guess. And that makes it also very easy to go out of bounds, <coughs> which may come into play soon or not. We'll see. You know, in the old Tomb Raider games, it takes a lot of effort to go into walls, and you just use a flare. It's,、yeah. it's really sad. I like how last year I was like, running Legend, and you told me I should run the old Tomb Raider games, and then I learned the old Tomb Raider games, and now it's still not old enough.、Like、well, yes. <laughs> Never s <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I did this just for you. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. <laughs> no, no, I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Top 10 cutest anime romances. <laughs>、oh, this is also the first game where you can actually combine items. Exactly.、So、there's a unique、uh, mechanic right there. Ignore the dogs, nothing happened. The mechanic also, just like the rope, never gets explained. So <laughs> you have to. Find that out yourself somehow. There's no tool tips or tutorials. <laughs> well, there is a tutorial, but not this part. <laughs> And here <coughs> we're going for another magic trick with the、uh, flares. So we're going to line up two flares very close to each other and gonna try to grab them again facing the other direction in a somewhat specific angle. 
which is also why I saved before, and let's see where this takes us. So basically, Lara will release the flare and continuously grab it again. Each time she's placed behind the flare, which uh, allows us to go up this slope. Hopefully, we're hitting the correct spot here. Otherwise, we will have to try again. But we did hit the correct spot. Good. <clears throat> so usually, you would have to lower the sand here by like doing a lot of puzzle things, but puzzles and Tomb Raider speedruns, that doesn't make much sense, to be honest. They're also optional. Shush. <laughs> And now we're going into the next part, where we will also use a flare for a magic trick, but also one of our other instruments. And those are the binoculars. Um, if you know Dark Souls 2 speedruns, you know that binoculars can be very powerful, and this is actually the game they uh, got inspired from. Because it also has a stamina bar, so you know this is true. This looks a bit iffy, but let's see how it works out. Yeah, perfect. So <coughs> essentially what Kera is doing there, he uh, embeds into a wall, you need to be out of bounds, and then he uses the binoculars to look at a certain spot, and then if you essentially let go of the binoculars, uh, the camera that you just used to look somewhere triggers uh, uh, a trigger, because the game thinks you are the camera. <laughs> So by throwing the camera through the maps, <laughs> you can make the game think that Lara is in different spots where she actually isn't. Exactly. So basically the game is keeping track of a list of different entities on the map that can interact with triggers. So on top is always Lara, so it's, you're only always supposed to be, it's always supposed to be Lara that interacts with triggers. But as soon as she's off the map, so out of bounds like I did with the embed, um, then other entities can start interacting with triggers like enemies or flares even. And at the very bottom of that priority list is the camera itself. So if you want to use that binocular glitch, we have to make sure that there are no other enemies or flares or anything of that matter on the map. Which is also why from now on, for example, I could not use it because of these mummies. So th these also count as, as entities that uh, would prevent me from using the binoculars. Yeah, there's a similar version of this in uh, Tomb Raider 3, but unfortunately we don't have binoculars, so we'll just have to do it with flares. Exactly. So basically when you throw the camera, um, you throw it a certain distance, I'm not quite sure on that, maybe like six tiles, I'm just saying some numbers here, and then you can uh, extend that range a bit more by also performing a roll afterwards. So we are still limited to like a certain range we can uh, throw the camera. Yeah, unfortunately you can't just make it on the first block and then yeah, end the exactly. level. <laughs> so in some levels I actually have to still travel a certain distance, so I'm in range to reach the level end trigger. Yeah, it, it's in some levels it actually means he has to go to a place where you would never go mm. unless you do that one glitch. Uh, yeah. And here I want to actually jump around a trigger. Since that would... Um, that's not my sprint button. Uh, since that would trigger some enemies, and as we, I just mentioned, I don't really want to have enemies on the map, because then that would not allow me to use my binoculars. I mean, I could still use them, but not the way I want them to. And also, this is definitely the uh, intended route. We and have a donation of five dollars, ch challenging the couch by saying, "Toka, do a dab for me." What? <laughs> I'm not looking. I'm not looking. It's okay. <laughs> no thanks. We're what? Who eyes. even was that? <laughs> Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't look. Unsure dab. In brackets. <laughs> okay, so in the meantime, I uh, embedded in a few walls. Yeah, normally you're supposed to do a car chase here. Uh, I mean, I'm doing a car chase right here. Oh. There is my car, and I will, oops, ignore <laughs> it. But this wall looks kind of comfy, <laughs> so. Well, it's still. It. Oh no, I let go of the keyboard. Damn. Well, I'll just drink away the sorrow, I guess. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the music. But yeah, you would be chasing that truck that throws out grenades and then hopefully not die, but, well, <laughs> we, we got special tricks. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, there's a list of priorities, and as it happens, that guy in the truck is the next um, target that can uh, interact with triggers. And we will basically just wait out of bounds here until he arrives at the level end. And yes, Toka, I can do funny <laughs> stuff with the camera. I didn't say anything. <laughs> 
Hi, but thanks. Lara grew a beard. <laughs> why, is she, why is she so angry? Is it, is it because she's Japanese yeah, I was now? about to say. <laughs> While we're waiting, I'm just going to point out real quick that we have a donation incentive for the run that is coming up after this one, which is going to be Skylar and Plux Adventure on Clover Island, and we have a special showcase, which we're still missing $146 for. So get in those donations if you want to see that. And by now the uh, enemy actually arrived at level end, and all of a sudden uh, we have a jeep, and Lara's very good at driving a jeep, I guess. Oops. Insane driving skills by Laura. Well, yeah, she, this is the first time she touched a <laughs> car, of course. <laughs> well, she has uh, flying a helicopter in the third game before, so... Um, I, mean, I mean, I meant in this game, since <laughs> she's grown up, but sure. She has to learn it all again. So here are some more uh, alternative routes, and since there are no enemies on the map, uh, I might want to use my binoculars. When they say map, do you mean the whole map or just the chunk of the map that's loaded? Assuming it's not the whole map loaded at once. It's the second. Like okay. the, the whole map, I think, is loaded at once. Yeah, in, uh, yeah. in Tomb Raider 4, for the first time, they segmented levels into like mini levels in a way where you have loading screens in between sections. Right, yeah. Okay. You can even go back and forth between them, which is really confusing when you play this for the first time. <laughs> because, uh, as I said, like in the, in the previous games, you just. When there was a loading screen, you were done. And here you sometimes have to go back intentionally to be able to progress. And here I'm killing some scorpions because I want to use my binoculars again. These would not allow me to do so. And we will also do a flare jump here to get past this door slash block where basically I place a flare close to where I'm out of bounds. I try to grab it and that will um, nullify my collision. And while I'm in that animation of walking towards the flare and where I don't have collision, I will just do a forward jump, so I will jump forwards through collision. And uh, now I still have to wait for that first flare to uh, extinguish, because as I said, it also counts as, a, as an entity, so it could interact with triggers, so we have to wait for that, so this takes a while, but there we go. And uh, yeah, so this is one of those levels we mentioned before where you can't reach the level exit trigger from the very start, so I actually have to do some uh, Tomb Raiding, I guess. How tragic. I know. I'm sorry. <sighs> this is not what I signed up for. <sighs> also, ignore Lara sighing. It doesn't mean anything. Do you really not want to explain it? Well, I mean... I can do it if you want. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. <sighs> so, uh, in Co Com Cambodia, that's the word, uh, he used the large med kit and he used it while he was in the menu. <laughs> And what you can do in Tomb Raider, there's a hotkey for using medkits as well. So you use the medkit by pressing it, and then you also use it by clicking the hotkey, which uh, makes the game think that you have minus one instead of zero medkits. And because the game is not very well programmed, minus one means uh, the highest number possible, which is probably something like 260,000 or a million or something. It's enough for a run. <laughs> Barely so, suffices. So for, for all intents and purposes, he has infinite medkits. And so he, he can just spam that uh, large medkit button whenever he needs to, which is uh, very handy here or, well, in the whole game. <laughs> I mean, it literally says unlimited med packs if I were, were to open the inventory now. So this has to be intentional. Uh, this is actually the amount of medkits you would get when you did the when you would de would do the cheat. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, in a way, hmm? it's cheating. No. What? <laughs> so while in some of the other Tomb Raider games we have to painfully <laughs> manage our medkits, he just he just gets infinite. That's why I chose this one. So I don't have to really pay attention. It's okay. Yeah, but you need to press that key for like 10 minutes straight. What? <laughs> what is the spoiler? Please. Uh, just just an know. assumption, I guess. Yeah. This potentially could happen, exactly. maybe. Like, <laughs> if I were to be constantly damaged by some source. <laughs> what, what could that possibly be? 
And here I will do another flare jump to go out of bounds into a location from where I can uh, reach the level end trigger. And then we're uh, on a train, I guess. So uh, this train is a bit different because we can't really go out of bounds here and hit any level end trigger. We actually have to do this kind of intended, I guess. So what we'll do is we go uh, the entire way one way, have to hit a, a, or switch a lever, go all the way back because then the door is open and we can escape. And uh, yeah, so this is a rather movement-centric stage, I guess, which is why I always uh, am very good at this. <laughs> And uh, you will see me do a few weird jumps every now and then, and that's because I want to skip some um, cutscene triggers, which would like go on for like 10 seconds. So try to not be confused about my amazing movement lines. Uh, Flux just said in chat, by the way, it's uh, 65,000, since it's an, it's an unsigned integer, if you can read that correctly, yeah. <coughs> yes, what? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 65,000, that's, that's all you need to know. Yeah. Roughly. Okay, there we go. First try, nice. Hello, Flux, by the way. Sorry, I can't see chat right now. <laughs> Are you going to do the special ending? The special? Oh, yeah, of course. Nice. But first, we are doing some uh, setup here because um, there is a card up ahead where there's like a big tarp. You can see it already there in green. And you're supposed to shimmy around it, and shimming is really. Slow. Oh, this, I might have screwed it up. Yeah. Ah, no, okay. Nice. So, yeah, um, if you do the correct amount of jumps and side flips and whatnot, you can actually land on top of it, which circumvents the whole shimming section. As I said, it would take a pretty long time. And this cutscene we could technically skip, but we would have to do it both ways, and it's very finicky, and nobody really does it for now. And uh, yeah, so that's actually the, the final card from this direction. Just have to get inside and pick up some stuff. Like shotgun ammo, that's always helpful for now. And even more important is the, the crowbar, which we need to finish this level because this allows us to use these switches. And now we go all the way back. The, the crowbar is insanely useful in this game actually. Yes. In so many yeah. ways you wouldn't expect, like you wouldn't expect it to be able to be used as a lever. Later on you can use it to open doors. That's all things that you have no idea are possible. And when you play this the first time, this can be really frustrating because you just don't know the mechanics. So here I'll try to do another cutscene skip, even though this is arguably the... Yeah, didn't get it. Um, yeah, this is arguably the most finicky one. Hopefully I still landed on the cart. I think I did. You can actually trigger the cutscene and then just land next to the cart. Yeah, okay. Which of course means you will die. And then there is another one here. Let me just save in case I actually... Okay, good. And now we just need to do one more jump at the end. Which is not very uh, nice because the camera, as you can see, is very helpful. And yeah, then we just hit this... Uh, Lever and we uh, get out of the train. The rough way. Oh no! <laughs> but it's okay, we just spawn in Cairo anyways. Is, is the healthcare system that good in <laughs> Egypt? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, maybe just in general, I think Tomb Raider 4 is by far the longest casually, I would say. Oh yes, yes, for sure. I mean, I did play casually. I did not play all of them casually, but I can definitely attest that it is very long, and especially if you have no help. It's like, just getting like to Cairo probably takes you at least 20 hours game time. Mm. But yeah, the fact that it, it can compete with the other Tomb Raider games when it comes, to, like the classics at least, when it comes to uh, how short the run is, tells you how much time we can save. Yeah, all, all thanks to the binoculars, yeah. basically. I mean, there is also a uh, no, kind of a no binocular uh, category, which I th think is one and a half hours, but that's still like half an hour we just can uh, uh, skip. Or maybe I'm mistaken that. I'm not running it, as you can tell. Uh, here we just do a, like trying to circumvent having to swim here. And uh, then we go crawling in here. Dame, 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 dame. <laughs> Oops. No. 
Thank you for the translation. <laughs> I just wanted to take out the flare as quickly as possible. So up here we have another uh, cutscene to the right. Uh, I want to circumvent that. So uh, all these medpack users are pretty much useless, but uh, it's, you can kind of see it as a warm-up for a later part, as I got kind of alluded to, um, which is coming up semi-soonish. So there's one more level in between, uh, which is this one. What finger are you using for the medkit? Uh, right middle finger, which okay. is... Well, I'm not going to give any comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strong, okay. <laughs> So um, here you're supposed to only go after you kind of went through the rest of this, this temple complex because you need two key items to insert in, into these keyholes here. However, there's another glitch we can uh, use called the keyhole glitch. Basically, I will once again place a flare close to this keyhole. And then Lara tries to kind of run towards it, but the game just interacts with the next best thing on the map, which is the keyhole. And so even though we don't have the item for it, it just inserts it and... I guess Laura's a magician, I don't know. Ancient Egypt secret. So same over here, and then we can uh, open the gate at the bottom and continue on to the next part. And then we will go into Cleopatra's palaces where we'll do one more of those binocular glitches, which is actually pretty much considered to be, it's not really the most random one anymore, but it's still definitely the, I guess, most finicky one. So I hope I get it in a reasonable amount of time or lack thereof. Does this game have like a solid tutorial for these uh, binocular skips yet? Uh, no, you basically take world record video and look at the input display. <laughs> okay, so it's still like in the old days where if you wanted to learn it, you, you had to exactly. talk to Riku and hope he helps you. <laughs> and Riku always helps. Well, yeah, but if he wasn't, if he was sleeping, uh, you couldn't practice. <laughs> so here's another uh, cutscene on the tile the next to this uh, thing that I'm trying. Yeah, I skipped it, and then I'll try to do this binocular glitch here which requires a bit of a lineup, and I don't like it, but we'll see. So now we wait and hope, I guess. I'll give it like 10 seconds. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Good, uh, that makes sense. So th since this is a Tomb Raider that I play, it has to have a motorbike segment, right? Like, oh, is that why you chose it? Of course, because Angel of Darkness has a. Oh wait, never mind. But yeah, so if you're currently playing or, or listening on, uh, not on headphones or on loudspeaker, then I would suggest stop. Uh, then I would suggest switching to headphones unless you have some really good excuses ready. Because uh, I will <laughs> teleport up here to the uh, top part, and there will be two flamethrowers. And since I'm close to the flamethrowers, I will get set on fire. And since I have a lot of med kits, I will have to constantly heal myself. Yeah, and there's uh, no good way to like get rid of the fire without losing time. So the fastest way is to just keep healing until you eventually run into water. Exactly. So this is now like a, a woman's tennis game here. <laughs> I've heard other uh, metaphors for this, but I like women's tennis. That, that's it. Yeah, in case, in case someone hears it, just say you're watching tennis. <laughs> so there is a way to prevent having to get, like getting set on fire, but it's actually a slower route. 
overall because you have to avoid fire twice, basically. And you wouldn't ride a bicycle while being on fire. <laughs> Come on. Uh, here's a guy on the rooftop I need to, to kill for uh, binocular glitch to work. You can't really see him, but you can see the grenade. Or not. And then there are two more guys up ahead that I hopefully will be able to uh, eliminate more quickly. Just like that. And then we're gonna use the binoculars. So yeah, level transitions do not uh, heal me or like get rid of the fire. Yeah, and even during cutscenes he needs to keep healing sometimes just so he doesn't die. So yes. in a cutscene you will just keep hearing this constantly. I yes, except for uh, level end cutscenes. Like there you can actually die and you will still get to the next level. But for example this cutscene that will play right here, you can still hear the, the healing because I actually have to heal you. Yeah, and if the finger would fall asleep, he, he would die. Uh, maybe Lara's just really excited to see this monster. <laughs> or she's laughing at it. <laughs> oh, yeah, or that. Or she's playing tennis with the monster. <laughs> maybe it's just culturally different in Japan and they just so love yeah, like Now that. I can uh, stop healing because it's a level end cutscene. Also in this whole Cairo level, you're supposed to actually upgrade your motorbike multiple times. So you're supposed to, with this uh, army guy, you're supposed to like do some fetch quests and then get a nitro for your bike. Here he just meets a lady on fire and lets himself carry to a, a truck. Which makes sense. Oh look, the fire is gone. Also cutscene. She's strong. じゃあやめて。あなたこそ頑張ったわね、軍曹。コードが分かったわ。次はどうする。多くの犠牲を払ったんだ。諦めないぞ。これは一応保険だよ。何の保険？俺の任務を君が邪魔しないための保険さ。
time the healing a bit better. So you can't actually completely mash the heal button for the entire time. There's a certain cooldown. So you have to get used to a certain rhythm. And here also I have to counter heal, since this is not a level end cutscene. But there will be one shortly. And it might even involve some water. You think Lara's up for a little bath? Yes. I think some people would actually like that to happen. So here, hopefully there will be some camera flickering. Not because I like it, but this indicates that there are no uh, enemies on the map anymore. And then we hit the cutscene. So I could, but I guess I will not continue the healing here to not break immersion. Because this is perfect what? immersion with Lara I set on fire. I thought he's dead. Is oh no. What? what? <laughs> Why is he whispering in this version? Because he's evil now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you not see the red eyes? <laughs> I love that you mentioned. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Jakku? <laughs> I can hear something flowing. That sounds promising, but I guess not. Yeah, and unfortunately, cutscene water doesn't count. I mean, we can't say for sure it's water. We don't see what it is. So. Oh yeah, it could be anything. oil or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, there, you also <laughs> saw the uh, the grenade launcher again. Back. It's actually a very helpful weapon because, as you can see, it basically one shots every enemy. Here we do some uh, manipulation of that guy's AI. So he ran over to the other side, so I can hit both of them with the same uh, ammunition. And this is actually a pretty intense uh, part of the run since, you know, obviously Lara's still on fire, but you also have to do some pretty precise jumps. And it doesn't help that A, you have to constantly counter heal, and B, you can't really see all that much because, you know, fire. Here I try to jump around a, an enemy trigger. I think that should have worked. We'll see. If there are two guys standing on the other side there, which they are not, then yes, I successfully skipped the enemy trigger. Here we pick up uh, a shovel handle and later on a shovel blade, be, which you are supposed to use to uh, gain access to the next level, which we will actually not use them for, but we still want to collect them for the next level. Uh, you will see there why. And it's not to dig anything up. An another case of bad programming. Yes. So yeah, these are the jumps that are usually a bit, you know, Stressful. And Lara just keeps on laughing. I think she became a maniac. She's killing people and just keeps laughing. <laughs> While on fire. <laughs> Getting worse and worse. So these guys I'm s obviously still killing for, uh, to get rid of them for the binocular glitch and here we have the shovel blade. And now we can get out of here and start the uh, <laughs> best level in, in the run. Did I aim too low? I think I aimed too low. Let's just try again. Uh, I already dropped the flare, yes. So this is underneath the Sphinx, um, and yeah, it's a very exciting level because puzzles. But first, I want to avoid um, having this door getting closed because it doesn't just physically close; it would actually prevent me from also exiting using uh, other means. And for that, I have to uh, use another flare jump like that. So here are some some switches. 
Um, they all open different parts of the level if you activate them in the correct order. If not, you kind of have to unlock them again, which obviously takes way too much time. So let's hope I don't screw up. And um, you could, uh, could also see behind me there are two kind of watchdog, like mythical creatures. Those are not really important, but they're important because of the priority list I was mentioning when it comes to what can trigger what. So right now they're obviously pretty high on that list. Later on we will trigger some bats and what we want is that the dogs like stay above the bats on that list and we can only do that if we don't actually have to reload in this level. So also, yes. <laughs> So that was 10 minutes of intense uh, right middle finger use. <laughs> but not for that, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> so if you could see an input viewer, you would probably also see that I, from time to time, still do press like the large med key, uh, large med pack key, just because I'm used to it at this point. So out of reflex, I still sometimes try to heal myself in water. But yeah, back to the, um, the, the enemies. <clears throat> so we will trigger some bats later on. And if we don't reload, they will be placed below the watchdogs. And the watchdogs don't move unless we get, like we go into a specific tile. Which means if Lara goes out of bounds while the watchdogs are above the bats in the priority lists, um, the bats will trigger nothing. But if the bats are above the watchdogs and Lara's out of bounds, they are the next entity that can interact with triggers and then they would be a problem. Now even if we reload, we can still kill the bats, but obviously that takes longer and we want to avoid that. And as it just so happens, in this level there is a very infamous jump that even in casual gameplay is absolutely, like, I'm not sure what they were thinking, but yeah, that will be fun trying to nail that on the first try. Um, so yeah, and you can see Water Maze is, like, really exciting, especially after the previous 10 minutes of constant healing. Uh, yes, and it, there's definitely no way you could ever get lost in this or take a wrong turn, trust me. But some good runs have died here. I mean, what? If I remember correctly, if you uh, do the switches in the wrong order, the, you need to reset, right? And do it all over again? That's the one at the start. The switches oh, not, here. Not for this one, okay. These just open up different Oh, yeah, they patches. open up the doors. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, okay. So you just can't proceed unless you. You can only drown. <laughs> <laughs> Could be worse. So yeah, I'd got any uh, recommendations what to learn since this is apparently not the classic you wanted me to. Uh, learn. Well, there's there's only one good one. You I know which I see. one? Yeah, I yeah. But I already learned Angel of Darkness. I'm not sure what you're <laughs> alluding to. Well, um, I was gonna make a math joke, but it doesn't really have an official number. So just make it minus three. <laughs> well, which one? The Angel of Darkness. Okay. Actually, did I? I think I picked up the key right now. Did I? I hope. Let's Maybe. Check. I did. Good. Just making sure. So yeah, you can see some bats. These are actually not really a problem because these don't follow you. Um, but the ones in the next room kind of do. And yeah, I want to avoid that. So the ones from the next room I will actually kill even though I don't really have to. Assuming I would get that one jump first try and don't have to reload. But in case I do hit it, you know, it doesn't take much time to kill those. But once later on, they're a bit more annoying. We're having a $5 donation by our fellow Zoneris, uh, who says, Who would win? One zombie guy or one burning girl? Chat is to decide. Go for it. Um, yeah, and here are some very complex puzzles. I actually don't even know how you're supposed to get the actual solution, but yeah, luckily I hopefully picked the correct ones. So now we just have to go to one more uh, side room to do some uh, puzzles, which the next one will be equally as difficult as the one right now. 
and then we can go to the end. And we actually are doing this to collect four keys. And well, we only visited three key rooms, so this is where the uh, shovel parts might come in handy. But yeah, first this room, so the way towards the room is, is that's not really a problem, but the way back we'll have the jump, because right now we're jumping down, so this jump shouldn't be too much of a problem. But yeah, we have to do the same jump backwards, uh, on the way back, not backwards. And that's where it will be more difficult. So yeah, and in this room the puzzle consists of hitting every switch. This is too complicated for me, I don't understand that. Can you explain it again? Yes. <laughs> no, I have to focus. <laughs> Sorry. And bonk, apparently. Are there any instances in this game where bonking can save time? <laughs> Would you mind elaborating on that? Or? <laughs> so, um, if you sprint, and you try to t like take corners or steer to the left or right, you actually have a very large radius, so you can only go to left or right by so much. But you can actually kind of use the, the walls to uh, run into them and then get bounced off them in a certain direction to enable you to still maintain sprinting while, uh, to maintain the sprint while taking corners. And also this is the jump. Should be good, yeah, okay. So, Unless something goes wrong, I hopefully don't have to reload. And that means that the bats I just left there, I do not have to kill. But we'll see about that. So now we're in the room where we will insert the, the keys. Uh, first one to get rid of the bats. The grenade launcher, of course. A, a slight overkill. <laughs> I'm not sure if my, one might still be alive somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Let me take care of that first. So yeah, um, and here we're combining the shovel pieces to get another key. Uh, I'd got, do you want to explain that? Can you? I I'm don't not sure remember. I it's something okay. about item slots. Yeah, exactly. So you, we collected the shovel blade and the shovel um, handle in the previous level, which are not supposed to exist in this level, because you're supposed to use them in the previous level to undig the or dig up the, the, the entrance to this level. But somehow it adds up that the the uh, equivalent item numbers or slots in, in this level you get from combining them makes up the same number as the key we insert there. So that's... Simple math. Two yes. plus two. <laughs> Basically. But here are two more bats I want to get rid of because I have to do some uh, trigger skips next. I'm not sure. I, like That's amazing. You can't see, but I assume the bat is dead. I don't know. So um, here, the, this is a trapped room. In front of these statues, the tiles in front of these statues, they trigger the trap and they close the, the exit and entrance behind me. So I have to do these weird twist jumps to get uh, around them. Because the trap doesn't really matter too much to me, but I definitely want to have the, the exit open. Because if I had to, uh, if, I, if the exit were to go down, that would like, yeah, would require me to go into a much deeper into this, this level than I would have to if I can just uh, go around these triggers. So there is one more, I've, or two more, which is also why I'm lining these up somewhat precisely. And these four statues here we actually need for the final boss. Um, if there was a way we could uh, summon them similarly as in the uh, when we summoned the two other key items out of nowhere, then we could skip this entire level. This, the only purpose of this level is to get these four key items for the, the final boss. So now we can uh, exit. And since I did not have to reload, I should be able to ignore the bats in the final room. Saving five seconds or something. And we. Call, yeah, <laughs> thank you. And we. collect some more uh, flares here because flares are very nice. Are there even any bats left? Yes, there is one. So yeah, here I have to go out of bounds again because I'm doing a flare jump and this is where the bats, if they were in the priority list above the, the dogs, they could... Uh, let's try that again. <coughs> I forgot to turn right. <laughs> so instinctively I wanted to reload until I realized I should probably not reload here. 
So this is where things could go wrong if the bats were in the priority list above them. But this is uh, end of underneath the Sphinx. And here we have a pretty finicky uh, binocular glitch, which hopefully does not trigger the cutscene, but the level end. Good. And now we're basically on the semi-final stretch. We just have to get into the final level, and then it's time for the infamous math puzzle where I need Kayumon's help. I'm counting on you, literally. Are you sure about that? <laughs> we'll see. I don't have my notes with me. I hope you do have yours. <laughs> so these dogs here, on one hand we... Oops. We, uh, so we killed the dogs because we want to use binoculars later on, but in these rooms there are also the three statue heads. You maybe have, have been able, yeah, there you see one. Those have gems in their mouth and the uh, door at the end only opens if you destroy the gems. And for that we try to use the super ammo for the grenade launcher, which kind of like spawns three child grenades once they explode. And this is also where RNG somewhat comes into play. Like, sometimes they just don't hit the grenade. Sometimes they even hit the mummies behind the door, so you don't even have to kill those. So this is also where a bit of RNG comes into play. Um, there's another room like this coming up. Though without... I me. hate this trapdoor mechanic, by the way. Which one? The one that you just did. Oh, like, like, it was so unobvious that you could <laughs> open these. So here we have some more doggos. Here we actually don't really care about the gems, we just need to get rid of the enemies, and then we can uh, use the binoculars. Okay. How big are the triggers anyways to end the, to, like the level end triggers or it whatever? It depends. Like Sometimes there are just one, one tile, like one square on the ground. Sometimes there are really like huge surfaces. So it kind of depends. Right. Some, of, some of these triggers you can like really just kind of wing it and point to wherever, just in general direction, some you really need to set up for. And like this one, this next one for example, I hope I don't jinx it, but you can be very liberal with where you're aiming at. Yeah. Like I know between myself and Futi, who's the, the world record holder, we aim at basic two completely different spots, but we both, yeah. Yeah, it depends yep. on the level layout. Exactly. I mean, in some yeah. levels, you end the level in a very short, uh, very small corridor, so it's only one block. And other times, you have like a wide s space where you can walk and still end it. So it might be multiple blocks. And here I do a different glitch to get to the bottom of this pit, um, because I want to get close to the level end trigger. And obviously, you do that by hugging uh, nothingness and then dropping down. So this is, um, basically, Lara tries to descend from the next best location, and since we kind of place her somewhat in the air, she just teleports to the next invisible ledge, I guess. And since it's a safety drop from there, she doesn't take any damage, which makes sense. So down here, you sh you're definitely not supposed to be. But, you know, we explore, we're exploring some new worlds here. And now we can go pretty close to the level exit trigger and uh, use our binoculars which brings us to the second last level, which should be really short. Would you allow me to sneak in some short donations? Oh, of course. All right. So we have seven ball seven, <laughs> given mm. us yet another dollar, uh, pointing out that he thinks this game is just like Arabian Nights. <laughs> Egyptian and Nights. Then we have Gene uh, saying, Speedcon hype, really nice runs this week. I wish every runner a good, a good run. Uh, and he tells us a German joke, which I'm gonna give place as we also had some Japanese. Uh, am Ende noch ein kurzer Witz. Windows ist wie ein U-Boot. Sobald man ein Fenster öffnet, fangen die Probleme an. Oh well. No. You can Google that one if you don't speak German. <laughs> so yeah, this is the aforementioned map puzzle. So um, at the walls behind me, you kind of could see some hieroglyphs. And there are a certain amount of squiggly lines. So in the first room, you have two squiggly lines, which correspond to two liters you need to insert into the scale. But we only, ooh, this is not good. <laughs> did it, where did I save? OK, good. Um, so yeah, we need to insert two liters into this uh, base here. But we only have water skins that contain, can contain three or five liters. 
So it's a matter of combining them in a certain way. Will this? Okay. Good. <laughs> so yeah, you have to combine them in a certain way using the combination mechanic we already alluded to before. So now we need to uh, do it for four liters, and then at the end, one liter. How so do you do four liters? Yeah, I don't know. How? It's only three and five. <laughs> what? Ooh, four liters. So yeah, but you still kind of want to save in front of these vases because sometimes even though Lara stands immediately or right in front of them, she just pours the water onto the ground, um, which <laughs> you kind of don't want to. <laughs> And here I actually want to, to kill these bats because I will do another uh, a similar glitch or the same glitch I did uh, outside where I dropped down from an invisible ledge. And it has happened that one of these bats actually pushed me down and I just, like, without getting the, the fall damage cancel and I died at the very end. Oh, there's still one. Hello. And yes, bats in this game are very well visible and behave very rationally. So this is the one liter. You must be a genius that you figured this out. <laughs> yeah, right. And here I'm setting up for the final drop down. So you're supposed to climb down here into the final part of the level, but we can kind of take a shortcut, hopefully. That was for good luck. And here is where we uh, place these four items. And if you like, can read fast, yes, the, I the inventory says Holy Bible in Japanese. That's what I meant with some interesting translations. Well, so in what is it called in English again? Holy Scripture. Oh, OK. Or Holy Sculpture, I'm not sure, one of those. But yeah, it definitely doesn't say Holy Bible. And it also doesn't say in German Heilige a holy statue, something like that. So yeah, um, if you were following the lore, which obviously we have been, um, so Lara's trying to uh, summon Horus here to seal Set, the, the evil god, but as it turns out, Set will just uh, possess the statue, I guess, or Horus. And since uh, I'd got pointed this out last year, uh, I can say it again, uh, this is a classic Tomb Raider, so we don't fight the final boss, we escape from the final boss. Very inspirational, it turned out to be true. Also, that makes sense. So this is the only spot in the entire level where the geometry aligns perfectly there, where for some reason, if you let go and re-grab at the perf or like quickly enough, you will just get uh, insane upwarp. And as it just turns out as well, the upper part there is like grabable, so good shortcut. And yeah, we're actually approaching the end. There are a few more jumps we have to do, and then some more traps to circumvent. What could go wrong? No runs have ever died here ever. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's how you don't do it. That's yes, for exactly. showcasing that deliberately. Trying, the new runners, trying to show the new runners here what not to do. See it. Like, you can do the same thing in Tomb Raider 3. At the end, you'd need to climb and also die. <laughs> so yeah, and the, there is a final boss, as we said, this is, uh, but he, he's invulnerable. You can't really do anything. So your goal is to seal him down here by escaping and shutting the, the lid at the top of this uh, part here. I might have to, yeah, I think, yeah, have to shimmy left. If you're... If you aim, uh, if you grab far enough to the left, you don't have to do this small shimmy as well, but that's okay. So yeah, we have to shut this, this door here, or we kind of don't have to. If you go to the right, like at the correct time, you just climb out without shutting the door. So I guess Laura doesn't really care about evil gods ruling the earth. There would be a cutscene otherwise here where she actually shuts the door. And yeah, here are some more traps, and you could get ready on time, which will be after... Uh, the after I run into the corridor, uh, I know thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's why was that time? <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> Just making it uh, more enjoyable. 
mean, you still have six minutes to spare. Uh, do could whatever be, you could want, be really. enough. Okay, let's just do it safe then, since it's that close. Yeah, I see what I did wrong. All right, well, that's also wrong. Of course, you know, the left part has a, has a, like, there is a part on the left where you can grab it, not in the center, but the right doesn't. So, yeah. But yeah, here we go, this is the uh, final sprint, and uh, not sub 104, but oh well, time. So yeah, that was uh, Tom 4 in Japanese, and uh, in case, I'm not sure if someone from you said it, but yes, People in the Tomb Rounder community say Tomf. It is a kind of an old tradition, eight, uh, dating back way before my time. No, um, basically, <laughs> some of the previous German uh, runners would pronounce Tomb Raider the way you write it in German, so it would be Tomf Raider, <laughs> and yeah, that sounds funny, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that was to uh, Tomb Four. Tomorrow we have Tomb Raider Two and Angel of Darkness, and on Sunday we have Tomb Raider Underworld. Uh, yeah, hope this was worth the bit war. <laughs> 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 yes, and we also have female Tomb Raider at the very end, aka Uncharted. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, have fun with the rest of the event. And thanks to my coach. <laughs> thanks so much, Kadara, for your run of Tomb Raider... Uh, upcoming, we're...